two weekends ago, I was sitting down um, watching the start of the French South Africa quarterfinal. And I sat there and I thought, you know, this feels like a moment. And not just one of those moments where it's like, ah, cool game, whatever, but a moment that will be remembered. A moment that has a lot of importance. And I just realized that there's something about the South African spirit that I don't think many other countries can match. Something about this just unrelenting willingness to never give up and to keep on fighting and persevering no matter what odds are stacked against you. I got to thinking about rugby in South Africa and what rugby in South Africa represents. I don't think it's just rugby and I don't think it's just hope, but I think it's the realization of hope. It's the realization of one man's dream to unite a country through sport. I look back at the 95 World Cup and for me, I wasn't, I wasn't even born then. But that game, that moment, I think that's when South Africa was born. I think that was the, the start of this rainbow nation. Thirty years later, give or take, I think there's a moment like that that's happening right now and a moment I don't think as South Africans we can let kind of slip past us. And I think this message would be more for the youth in South Africa. Those that didn't experience the 95 World Cup, but we've heard the stories and we understand what it meant for South Africa. And 30 years later, the Springboks are still playing for that same idea that they did in 1995. That idea of bringing hope to a nation. And 2007, I think without realizing it, the South African team did that. And then you look at the 2019 World Cup and you look at what went into that win. You know, what, watching Chasing the Sun and seeing what Rossi and Sia and the whole team did to win that World Cup and who they were winning that World Cup for. If you've got some experience of South Africa, the most beautiful place to live. There's yet so much that's going wrong and you know, load shedding and lack of water and all crime and all sorts of things. So you deal with these challenges all the time. But on Saturday at 3 p.m. or 5 p.m., you get to open up a beer or a brandy, <laughs> and and just enjoy what has been the, one of the best teams in the world for the last five years. Hopefully, beating another nation that has so much more than what we've got. And for two or three days after that, you float above all the all the mayhem. I think it brought a different realization to the importance of rugby in this country. And speaking to people for the past couple of weeks. I think I see that hope that the Springbok team brings. That those comments of, yeah, see, there is the, the box need to win this weekend. You know, it's, it will it'll do so much for the country. And as amazing as that is, there's something concerning about it as well. And something concerning in the fact that we seem to be in this four-year cycle where our politics kind of falls apart. Our country is very unstable, you know, load shedding, lack of water, inflation, crime. It's, I mean, I think every South African knows the draw. But every four years, we send the Springboks on this quest to bring hope to the country. I hope that's quite short-lived because we wake up to the realization of where our country is and that nothing's changed. And that reminds me of a thing from Ted Lasso where they say it's the hope that kills you. 
And I think South Africa is kind of there where we keep hoping that things are going to get better. But behind the scenes, we're kind of like, ah, nothing's going to get better in this country. And for my generation, for the youth, I see that happening. You know, we've been told from a young age, it's time to immigrate, you know, build up yourself here, go overseas and, and start your life overseas. There's nothing for you in South Africa. And going back to that moment, sitting on the couch, watching the French game, there was this realization that we can't keep putting it on the box to bring hope to us every four years. And we can't keep relying on hope to change our country. Hope only goes so far until we as South Africans decide to take action. When we as South Africans decide, it's time to build a better country. It's time to realize that dream of the 1995 World Cup win, almost 30 years later. And I don't want to bring politics into a conversation about rugby, but rugby and politics are at the core of our country's DNA. As the number one fan of the Springboks, we're about to take off, to go to Paris, to go and cheer our boys, encourage them to fight a good, good fight and ensure that they bring the cup home. As I take off, I'm going to be telling them they have the hopes and the great wishes of our people. So we are in a good space as South Africans and all we need to do now is to stand behind our two teams and make sure that they feel the weight of our support and which is precisely what I think doing. from the government perspective the box winning kind of shifts focus away from the lack of services that we're getting in this country it takes the pressure off them a little bit I mean I don't even remember when last we had load shedding like maybe that's just in this area but it kind of feels like there's this forgetting of what's happening in this country and our focus is just on the box, which I completely understand because I'm in the same boat. But I think what's important for all of us to remember and to keep in mind is we cannot keep asking the box every four years to go and play for hope for a better country and showing what it means to be South African every time they step onto that field. Just take the France and the England game. I don't think many other countries could win battles like that and still at the end of the day walk and greet every single fan in the crowd. There's something special and unique about what our team does. And as a South African, as a young South African, I think it's time for us to start taking responsibility for our country. And not in the sense of going and rioting on the streets or blaming our government for everything. I think our government had an important role to play. But I think that role is moving. And I think, like I said, that moment is for us to realize the goals that Mandela put down and what was sealed in that 1995 victory. You know, those words of Francois Pinard just echo. David, we didn't have 60,000 South Africans. We have 43 million South Africans. And that's something I don't think a Springbok captain has forgotten. I think as South Africans now, in this moment, it's time for us to make a decision. And it's a decision for the youth. For those that weren't there at the 95 World Cup, but for those who understand what that win meant for this country. I think it's pretty cool that 28 years later, for the first time since the 95 World Cup, we're facing the All Blacks in a final. And for me, it really just solidifies that this is a moment. You know, 
it's, it's looking back 30 years and saying, where have we come? As a country, where are we? And what do we as the youth now need to do to move our country in the right direction? And like I said again, I'm sorry for bringing politics on a day like this, but I think it's important. And I think we owe it to the box to say you are not alone and we stand with you. Win or lose, we are committed to building the country that they go out and play for every Saturday. Good luck, Box, this weekend. We're rooting for you. And to the South Africans that watch this, if you do watch this, I think it's time we stand up. We stand together because we are stronger together. And it's time to make a difference for our country and for our futures. And South Africa deserves more than conflict, load shedding, a terrible economy. We deserve more. <laughs>